Hello, everybody. This is actually quite a, a good group, mm -hmm. a lot of people. So I think me and Luis, probably you already met him as well. We've been talking about Gora for the last couple of years. At the beginning, nobody knew about this. So having some people in the room is, is good. So it means like we are doing something right. So today I'm going to talk about this project that I worked on last year. So this is called turning NoSQL data into graphs. So, so who was involved in this project at the beginning? So uh, me, I'm doing a PhD in the ETH in Zurich, in the systems group. I mean, really, my main focus is information retrieval and distributed and scalable data management systems. I'm a Gora committer and a PMC member. I usually hang around some mailing lists as well, so you probably see my name sometimes in some mailing lists. So also another person that was uh, one, of the, one of the people that actually had this idea of integrating this was Claudio Martella. He's a committer on Apache Giraffe. He's doing his PhD in the University of Amsterdam on complex networks and well, yeah, he's a, a GFR for a while. And also Luis, he's, he was working on his postdoc at Stanford. Now he's just play, playing around with code. He's having another talk after mine, I think, here about federated web search. So um, I don't know how many people is familiar with Gora. Can you raise your hands? Nobody? So, OK, so this is going to be interesting. So this is a talk mainly for uh, developers. So if you don't feel comfortable at any point, just raise your, raise your hand and ask me, and we can go over again. So what Gora is, we like to call ourselves the JDBC for NoSQLs. So you can actually, uh, we support different NoSQLs. We support Cassandra, HV, we support MySQL, uh, HyperSQL. We support a lot of databases. So the main idea that we do with Gora is that we try to abstract the data modeling from the from NoSQLs, right? For an, an application developer, it's kind of hard sometimes to get hold of all this technology. So we come to all these conferences, and we always hear about these different NoSQLs that everybody's building, right? So it is if you're a developer, let's say a mobile developer, it's really hard to first learn Mongo, and then you have to learn HBase, and then you have to learn Cassandra. So it's really hard to do all this. So the main use case for Gora was in, in using Apache Natch. Natch is a, a web crawler. I don't know if, people, if you are familiar with it. But the main use case with Natch is that you have to get all this information from the web. And when getting all this information from the web, you have to put it into somewhere, right? So what do people actually wanted to do is to, to decouple this web crawler from the persistency layer. So you can actually put your data, not just in HBase, not just in Cassandra, but just by changing the configuration, you could actually put your data anywhere. And that was the main motivation for Gora. So what Gora does, or how, how does it work? I mean. A lot of people usually go into the mailing list and asking, so how do we run this? So Gora, if you go to the mailing list, a lot of people will help you out. If you go to the website, our website is a uh, work in progress. We still have to do a lot of work into that. So I'm going to explain a little bit how it works. So Gora, what, what it needs is for you to define your schema on, on JSON. So why we use JSON? We use actually uh, JSON because Avro how many people is familiar with Avro here? OK, that's good. So we use Avro to compile our, we use Avro to compile our schemas into data beans, and then you use these data beans to push them into the, into the different backends. So I don't know if you can see this, but this is just a simple schema that we use for our examples. This is an employee, and this is type record. And then we just define its properties, right? So as it is just JSON, it's pretty simple to use. And then you can you have to run this compiler. This compiler is used in in Avro. And then when you you just have to pass it your schema and where you want to put it, and that's is going to run and get your beautiful data bin. So your data bin looks like this. It's already generated. And once you have your data bin, what you have to do is to actually map this data bin into the physical design of your 
uh, data store. So you have to define the, data, the physical layout that you do is different for each data store. So you have, if you were going to use HBase, for example, it would look like this. It would, if you were going to use Cassandra, then you would have different options, and you would do it in a different way. So, and then when after this, you have to, oh yeah, you can see this. So this is a property file, and on this property file, the only option that, that you have to set is that you're going to use HBase. Here it says HBase, yes? Trust me, it says HBase. And so that's the only, the only file that you have to change. And after that, what you do in Gora is you just say, well, just create a data store. And this data store, I want it to be an HBase, an HBase store. And then I can just run puts and gets from that. If I wanted to use Cassandra, then I would use a Cassandra store and then use it. We support Solar, Mongo, uh, Dynamo. And we support a bunch of them. So this is really cool. Like in a mobile application, for example, if we, in a mobile application, you have different use cases, right? So sometimes you want to do, let's say, if it's a mobile application, uh, a banking application. So if you're using banking application, you have to put your data into a transactional store. So they will, you use HBase. But if you are going, going to do some logging, then you just to put it into a plain file, or you could just put it into something that is less performance, like DynamoDB, for example. So you could just change it in here, and that's the all, all thing. That, that's pretty much the, the all the things you would have to do. And um, well, now Giraffe, do you have any questions until now with Gora? It's pretty simple to use. Like that's one one of the beauties about Gora. So. Yes, we're supporting SQL. Uh, can you elaborate a bit on this? Uh, how does it change compared to SQL? Sure. So how would it change if you use in SQL? It would only change in here. You use your SQL store, top class, and you just have this. So why would it change anything else? Because your schema is already defined in here. So you define your schema here, how you want it to be laid out, and then on your table, the physical, the physical layout probably would be the same. You just want to, to put it into the same table, the table name. You probably wouldn't have the family, and then how you map this data bin that you just generated into which column you want to, gen you want to put it. Can you generate those semi-automatically? Uh, yes. So, uh, that's, that's the cool thing about this, is that this data bin, you only generated once. So you would have to change just the configuration file. Do you change any of the primary? Uh, no SQLs, yeah. No so we're actually hoping that uh, we get a student for the Google Summer of Code project to rewrite this part, yes. So, so one, one of the projects actually has a small small uh, project consequence? And we actually, we, yeah, that's also a discussion we had a while ago is why don't we just generate this XML as well, which would be pretty simple, right, to just to generate it automatically. But some people would like to do some different physical layout. So we could just generate it, but maybe it's not what you want. You just want to at least have an idea of how you're going to put your, for example, the name, in which family this is going to be, or in which table it's going to be. So you still want to have a hold of some stuff. So something broke in here. So can anybody help me here? So yes, please help me out. <laughs> Does your SQL do any push down into the storage engine at all? No, not really. Yes. So this is mainly just an an, an abstraction layer on top of you do your NoSQLs. Yes. So for some applications, it's really, it's really nice and neat to use. For example, there's some people using it for data integration, so where performance might not actually be a, a top requirement. I mean, it, it always is, but if you are working with, I don't know, like mobile transactions on a bank, banking transactions, so you need like every microsecond, right? But if you are using just for logging, then 
then it's fine. Or if you're using it for Twitter or for something, something else, then it's just fine. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, there we go. Yeah, you just have to, you just have to wake up your computer. Okay, well. thank you. So yes, so this is the XML. Then you just change your configuration file, your properties. This data being, it will pretty much remain the same. So this is the, the good thing, right? You don't have to regenerate everything every time. And now giraffe. So how many people is familiar with giraffe? OK, a few people. So the main idea with giraffe is that you can run graph algorithms on top of, on top of different data sources. So why they created this project? Because running graph algorithms on top of MapReduce is, is hard. Doing all this iterative process is really slow because we have to hit the disk many times, at least two or three times. So on 2010, Google actually published this paper uh, that was called Pregels, and they were using this, uh, this bulk synchronous processing model that was created a while ago. So they just they just looked at this. Uh, they, they thought it was a really good idea, it, and it is a really good idea. And the main, the main catch with this bulk synchronous processing model is that you have to think like a vertex. So every vertex can actually iterate. So inside, uh, so everybody knows what a graph is. Yes. So the main idea with bulk synchronous processing is is this that you can actually com Every, every single vertex on your graph will do the processing. And, this ver and every vertex will just send messages to the other ones. So you don't actually have to load everything into, into memory and, and do this every time. It's just that every, every vertex does it. We should get like a board here so I could explain this. So there's two, there are many different ways how you can represent a graph. Some of, uh, one way is representing it representing it with an uh, adjacency matrix. Just a matrix saying which, which node goes to which other node, right? So the main idea is not doing this. It's just loading this into memory and having different parts of your MapReduce job just sending messages. So the main idea of this is having these super steps which resembles an iteration. And, this itera and every iteration will com will make every vertex compute whatever they need to compute. And they will send these messages across these super steps, or across these computation iterations. So for this model, like Google published this paper, but there's no open source implementation. But like it's, uh, we know open source. We like open source. So as Google published this, a bunch of open source projects came out. So we have Apache Hama, we have Giraffe. We have some other ones that is Golden Orb, Signal Collect, that they actually implement this Google Pregel model. So we decided to use Giraffe. Why Giraffe? Because Giraffe is also used quite a bit in the, in, in the industry. Uh, the people from Facebook use it. It, was, it came out from Facebook. A lot of, they are evaluating it in Spotify, actually, to, to use Giraffe. So that's the idea why we thought to use it, right? So it's been incubated since summer of 2011. It's all in Java. It implements all Pregel's API. It runs on MapReduce infrastructure. So the, what I was saying that why not implementing graph algorithms on top of MapReduce is, is not such a good idea. Because if we implement it like our naive implementation would actually wouldn't be so performant. But this Pregel model actually makes, makes it really well to, to do this graph processing. So this is a really nice project from people from Yahoo, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and other, and other people in the industry using this. So it is just a, a single map join, a single map only job. It runs on Hadoop in memory. So we load everything into memory in, from Giraffe. And then we make like every little vertex do the computation they need. And they need Zookeeper so that they can keep the states of every super step or every iteration of the process. So this is how it, it actually works. So on Giraffe, what you have to do is you have to load all the graph into memory. So every worker 
every worker will have to load these vert vertices, and then once it's, it's loaded, then with the super steps will start, these iterations will start, and they will have to start, they will call this method that is called compute, so every, every vertex will do its own computation, and if they need to pass some message into some other graphs, into some other vertexes, they will just do it on this. So on every super step, what they need to do is they, they do this iteration. So every vertex, every vertex do the, its computation. If, needs, if it needs to send some message, then it will send it at the end of the super step. So we have this like bar synchronization barrier. And after that, it just keeps on iterating until we get, uh, until our algorithm gets to the point it's, that, it's in, that it thinks it's all right. Then it steers down, gets all the memory free, and, and that's it. So there's a, actually a quite some good talks about Giraffe that Claudio gave. He gave a talk on Hadoop Summit last week on, on Amsterdam, and, but there's also a, a lot of talks on, on Giraffe. So the main components of Giraffe, is like it runs on top of Hadoop, so you need the masters, where it actually assigns all the partitions to all the, to all the workers, it synchronizes the super steps, and every worker in the MapReduce job, it will do the computation, it will load the graphs from the, from the data store, from the files that it needs to run, and Zookeeper will maintain the global, st the global application state. So what do you need then to, to run giraffe algorithms? So you just need your vector input, input format. So you need to say how you want to read your data. So you need, let's say if I want to, uh, I just write my, my file, and in my file I will say like, this is going to be my vertex, it's going to come first, then go, it's going to come their neighbor, and their neighbors, and I have to specify like how I want to put my results. For example, this would be, if I would want to do some, they have already implemented the page rank algorithm. You could just have the vertex ID or whatever, and then you can have the actual score, right? So, it, and then you can also specify some other, some other messaging. For example, you can specify a combiner, so you, you don't have to send all these messages on the super step iteration, so you can reduce the number of messages being passed around the, the network. You can also have this aggregator that you can have some, some global condition or some global computation. So this is actually how you would run a, a job inside Giraffe. It looks quite ugly, but it's, it's not. It's actually quite simple. So what you would do is just run, you have all these examples inside Giraffe. You have uh, this is the, the simplest one, right? The simple shortest path computation. So this, this means I, I want to know on how many hopes and how many jumps do I get from one place to another one, right, in, in my whole network. So I just want to run this. So this is my input format. I'm going to read from a text file. So this is a text file, a JSON text file. So this is where my input is. This is supposed to be on, on HDFS. And this is how I want to output it. I want to put the ID with the value in a text format and the output path where I want to put it and how many workers do I want it to, to use in this. So the examples that they have inside GRAF, there are many. They have PageRank, they have LingRAF, they have many algorithms already implemented. So that's why we thought about uh, joining Gora with Giraffe, because in that way, you could actually run all your algorithms, your graph algorithms on top of your data that you probably are already collecting. So for the people running or using Natch, for example, it's, it's really an appealing case, because they are already using Gora to persist all their data. But all these people that are collecting all this web crawl information, they, what are they doing? They would have to export it into some other format, or they would have to, to do some other ETL process to actually run some graph algorithms. So that's where the idea came out. We applied for the Google Summer of Code project, and we got accepted. And that's what uh, I ended up doing last year. 
So the main idea of, of this is that we have to create, as I said, we have to create this input format, so the vertex or the edges, because we can represent a, a graph on, ver on, on vertices or just edges. So you can just have your edge base, Cassandra, Solar, uh, some relational database management system, Accumulu, Mongo. We actually support Oracle NoSQL. Um, this good, in this uh, year, we're actually planning to have some in-memory database also inside Gora, so people can, can play around. So, the, so as, as I was saying, you can represent a, uh, a graph just using the vertices or just using the edges. So why you can represent that? Because or you represent every vertex or just the lines that actually attach to each vertex. So you just have to implement these two, two classes, right? So that's what I, this is like the, the ugly part. This is what I did for the Google Summer of Code project. So I did all this integration. So I created this class that is called the Gora Vertex Input Format. And then you can set up some, some parameters, like the data store class, the key that you are using, the persistent class, the persistency class, and, and so on, right? So this is the ugly part. And so as I was saying, in, in Giraffe, what you have to do is to actually load all this graph into memory. And one important class is this one. This is called Gora Vertex Reader. So what it does is that it actually reads the next vertex. And by using the next vertex, it will get this data from the data store and just pass it into the into Giraffe, into Giraffe to actually do the processing, to the graph processing. So this is nothing that, like the users, uh, people that would like to use this integration, they wouldn't have to see this code. This is already inside Giraffe. This is inside uh, uh, the latest release. So, and I will show you how, I will show you after these slides what that, what's the actual class that you would have to do. So the, in the edges, it's pretty much the same stuff. You, you would have your key class, your persistency class. You can also define uh, let's say if you want to run an, a graph algorithm job, but not in your whole database, maybe just from from the from the first hundred elements. So you you can also specify that just by saying, "Oh, this is my start key or my end key," and then you can just use it. So another thing that you have to use here is a key factory. And why do you have to use a key factory? Because when I was explaining about Gora, so in Gora, as I said, we abstract all data models from the NoSQLs and we just, reper we just give to the user a key value, a key value data model. So at the end, even if it's uh, MySQL, you would still do a simple put. You would do a put using a specific key. In this case, I'm using UTF-8 and I'm actually putting the whole employee in there. So the, the employee is actually passing to the data store as, as bytes, so we serialize everything. We use Avro for this. And we serialize everything that, everything inside this object, we serialize it using this key. So why do we need this key factory that I was explaining in this integration? Because your key, sorry, your key can actually be anything. It, it, can, it can be maybe a whole object, it can be a simple string, it can be anything, you, your key can be anything. So that's, that's a, for me, I think it's a really cool thing. So that's another class that you have to, you have to implement, and this is the, the key factory. So why do you have to implement this? Because if you pass, how do you pass everything into Giraffe? It's just a command line, a big command line. So in this command line, you have to specify the range of keys that you want to use. And the only way that you, you can pass it in the command line is a string. So you have to specify how you want this string to be converted back into this key object. So that's what you have to do. So now inside Giraffe, you have all these other new parameters. For example, you can specify which data store you want to use, if it's HBase, Cassandra, Solar, uh, how you want to persist it. This is the data bin that we're using. This is the key factory class. This is how you want to make this key into this object that you are using inside your, your data store. 
how you want to output it, if you want to put it, output it into plain text or whatever, and if you want to specify your star and your end key, because at some point you might not want to do the, the computation on all your database, maybe just some, some part of it. So what was the main problem on doing this? Like integrating to Apache Paris is, is not, it's true, it looks simple, it looks really simple, but it actually it's not because of all the many dependencies. Like in Gora, we actually suffer a lot from, from dependencies. Right now we are supporting HBase uh, 90.4, so that's quite old. And the main reason for this is that we support uh, all our serialization, we do it with Avro, and Avro, this has been changing quite a bit lately, and we have this Jira for, for how long how, do we have it? Do we have it, Luis, like six months or something? So we have this umbrella issue like for six months. And we are trying to get all this realization for all these different NoSQLs. So that was kind of kind of hard. And, and just making, com making it compatible between Giraffe and Angora. Giraffe, has, it came out from Facebook. It has different requirements from dependency. We had, we had a lot of... Uh, Cyclic, de uh, cyclic dependencies that we have, we had to hack this in through Maven, but this is all done, and that's the ugly part that I did. So for you people, it's now it's flexible, simple, and just pluggable. You can just run whatever you want. So now what? So this is how you would actually do it. Now this is schema you can actually see. So this is how you would define your data bin inside Gora. So you just this. Uh, this this JSON is from Avro, so if you know Avro, you know that this JSON is just resembling the, the Avro standard. So you just say, I want a record, the name of this record is Vertex, and where do I want to put it? I want to put it in this class. And what's the fields that it has? It will have a Vertex ID, it will have a value, and it will also contain some edges. So what is these edges? I can also define it in here, and I can say, well, this is my edge, and this is also a type of record, and that what it will going to have. So as this is just, a sum, this is just an, an example, but you could define like web pages, uh, I don't know, tweets. You could just define anything just with this. And after this, as I already explained, you just have to compile it. After you compile it using our compiler, you will get your beautiful data bin, and that's it. That's pretty much it. You have to, of course, again, decide how you're going to map this on your, on your physical layout. So I would say, okay, I want to put what I, uh, what I did. I want to put, um, uh, so I, I want my vertices. I want my vertices. Where do I want to put them? I want to put them into a table that's going to call graph giraffe in a family that is called vertices. And this is how I'm going to map, right? I'm going to map this vertex that is called gvertex that is using a class a string and a table that is this table, graph giraffe, is this one over here, graph giraffe. And this is my fields that I've already defined on, on one slide back. And that's it. So after that, uh, as I explained, you have to extend these two classes, the classes that, that I wrote. So you have to extend the Gora Vertex input format and, the, and this method, the create vertex reader. So why do you have to do that? Because what you actually want to do is you will get this Gora Vertex inside your, your class. You'll have this, this method that is called transform vertex. And this is just making this transformation into your Gora object, into the giraffe object. So where is so the giraffe object for this algorithm, it needs a long, a long writable and a double writable and a float writable. So I'm just converting in here, I'm just converting my Gora vertex into the vertex that giraffe understands. So that's, that could be yes, anything. If it's a web page, then I would get the web page in here and then I would just translate whatever val value my, my web page has into what giraffe understands. So now it's only pretty much just creating these two classes and then you're set up. And if you want to do the output in format, you do exactly the same thing. 
So instead of reading, you would have to extend the writer, and the writer is just that, right? You, you have your vertex, uh, your Gora vertex, and this Gora vertex, you just have to put all, all the information that it needs, and then you, you're done. So, but as I, as I said, Gora is a key value abstraction model for all the NoSQL, so you will need the key to map this Gora vertex. So you also have to implement this get Gora key method just to specify what's going to be the key you are using. And the key factor is to convert this, uh, the key factor is to actually convert this string into the object that you are using. So this is just, I'm just using the key string, I'm just passing it along, I'm just passing it along to giraffe. So this is actually the command line. Uh, for some people, I've shown this command. For some people, some people don't like it. Some people say that they, they've seen worse. So I guess it's intermediate. So the parameters that, that you use here, as I was saying, like the data store, here you just specify its age base. Then I could just put any other thing. So the key class I'm using to read all my data is just is a string. So how do I want to? To, to read this data, this is, if I have uh, written this, I know that I used uh, an H, a GH, that's a Gora H, and that can be just anything that you implement. And my star key, my end key, and then I would just run my, my simplest shortest path al algorithm on this. And then I could just say, where do I want to put it? If I wanted to put it on age base, or if I wanted to put it somewhere else. And that, that's, that would be it. So if you want to run algorith graph algorithms pretty much for free, this is the way that you do it. You wouldn't have to be exporting your data from one place to another one. You just have it in one single place, and then you just use your app to read it. So the only classes that you have to implement is the reader, if, and if you wanted to put it back into a NoSQL, you have to write the writer, and that's it. So, what are we looking into the future? More complex schemas, I'm sorry. This looks, maybe you will have, you have the slides and you will be able to look at this. But we are trying to make more nested schemas, like Avro now, have these union data types that you can actually specify what, if it's not uh, new, maybe it's a string, if it's not the string, maybe it's a record, and so on. That, so that's what we're trying to support inside Gora to actually make it more flexible. So we're trying to make a lot more complex schemas for people to use. This is actually the schema that they use in Apache Natch. This, is, this schema works. And, but people, you know, uh, that's a great thing about open source. A lot of people come into the mailing list with different use cases, wanting different things. And yes, sometimes we, we, we can't make everybody happy, right? But we try to make everybody happy, and we try to put some work into this. So we are trying also to, to implement more data stores, like Elasticsearch, the in-memory stuff, the, uh, I don't know how you pronounce this, is, a catch, yeah, e catch, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Hazelcast, and that's what we're hoping to get into the Google Summer of Code project this year. And if you have some other data store that you would like to be implemented, just write us an email on the mailing list, and we'll be happy to to do it. We also are looking into different serialization formats. There are a bunch of them out there. The problem is that there are there aren't that many benchmarks. So we don't, when I got into the project, they were already using Avro, which is fine. I mean, I don't have an, an, a big objection on why, why to stop using it. But maybe it'd be nice yes, if people could configure this. If I, don't want to, if I don't want to use Avro, I want to use Thrift, maybe I would just use Thrift to serialize everything. Maybe protobuffer or now Parquet, right? So this is what we are looking into the, into the future. And that would be it. Thank you. So do you have any questions that you'd like to be answered?